this morning's scripture as the word of the Lord comes to us from Genesis chapter 3 verse 23 through 24 and there we find these words therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken so he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. May God now bless the hearing and reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Our message this morning what's next we've heard our scripture reading uh, out of Genesis chapter 3 verse 23 through 24 there as we have looked at the text we discover that uh, post fall of man God begins to take action and he would move Adam and Eve out of the place that he originally designed, prepared, and created for their dwelling. All of us at some point in our lives have become or will become acquainted with failure, disappointment, grief, loss, guilt, mm. and even brokenness in our lives. My brothers and sisters, as we think about that for a moment, about the heartaches that we share along the way. Uh, let us uh, find the example as it is lived out on full display through Adam and Eve. As we look at the text, we're able to see from the position of hindsight, look at a peek into the future of their lives and how things would ultimately be for them as a result of the fall. God would relocate them. He would ultimately uh, not only relocate them, I think that's too nice of a word, he would ultimately evict them uh, from the Garden of Eden. You know how it is uh, when a property owner would evict an individual, marshals show up and they would assist the individual with a timeline in order for them to get what they're going to get and uh, get on from where they are. Uh, that's the scene and scenario that we have here when God would escort Adam and Eve off of the property. And just like Adam and Eve, in our lives, rarely do we have the luxury to skate through life without ever falling, without ever incurring some bruises, uh, without ever uh, accumulating some scrapes and cuts along the way. But nonetheless, here we are, that 23rd verse of Genesis chapter 3 says, Therefore, 
the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. God would drive out man from the garden. They, in essence, have done what many have shared with us in wise thoughts as years gone by, that we will never burn our bridges. Amen. Mm -hmm because we don't know when it is that we might have to cross back over them to the other side. <laughs> but here it is for Adam and Eve, there is no turning back, there is no uh, going back from which they come. They have indeed burnt their bridge. Um, God, as he would kick Adam and Eve out of the garden, um, God would ensure that they would not get anywhere near the tree of life. And that's something that we can learn from Adam and Eve's experience, though it would have been far better for them had they not eaten and disobeyed God now that they have, they found themselves uh, living life in a different fear, mm. a different spirit. Uh, they're in a different ball game, a whole new realm of life. Dr. Ephraim Williams once said something in a meeting uh, that makes a whole lot of sense. He said this in regards to a situation that he encountered and went through. He said, after God takes out the garbage, uh, don't you dare go and bring it back in. Having heard those words pounded on them in the years that would follow, I, I understand exactly what it was that Dr. Williams was trying to convey. Mm. There are some things that God has taken out of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't put in a request or a petition to get rid of it. As a matter of fact, we were trying best we could to cling on to it. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, God, having uh, evicted them from the garden, would uh, ensure that they would not um, eat of the tree of life. Here's the problem that they would have with eating of the tree of life, having uh, now fallen from grace. Uh, should they now at this particular point eat of the tree of life, they would then in turn live forever in a fallen state. They would live forever in a state of death and dying, spiritually separated and evicted from uh, the presence and place of God. So my brothers and sisters, as God would pushed them out of the garden. Uh, he would cause them to move on so that they would be able to experience life uh, once again down the road. They don't see it yet. Um, it's not apparent. Uh, it's not written plainly upon the, the walls, but uh, it's there. God is working uh, in their favor that they would ultimately, uh, mankind would have another chance. Mm. So my brothers and sisters in life, it's God would move us and push us towards 
our future and cause us to move on, it would behoove us to stop scratching and clawing, uh, trying best we can to hold on to our failures. And most of us don't see it that way. Uh, and the reason why I know that we don't always see it that way because we constantly cry, don't try and change me. Mm. Uh, and ultimately, when we say that without realizing it, we are trying to hold on to our failures. God moved Adam and Eve out of the garden for a reason because they had messed up what they had working in their favor. Adam could rise up early in the morning without lifting a finger. He could rise up and he would simply look out uh, over the field and he could grab whatever it was that he would choose to eat without watering any plants or flowers, without turning over dust or dirt or soil. He could just simply grab what he wanted. But my brothers and sisters, to live out the rest of his life uh, based on bad decisions in his life would be a tragedy. And God would want us to see that in our own lives rather than trying to cling on to the worst aspects and angles of our lives. God would tell us on this day that there are some things in our lives that we ought to move on from. Whatever God removes out of our lives, it is for our good. God kicked them out so that they would not live forever in that broken and fallen state. We have memories, both good and bad. Uh, those good memories of all that we shared and that we embraced and uh, that we would uh, love to live throughout forevermore. But uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, all of that good that Adam experienced in the garden, he had to release them and move on because of the taintedness of his life having disobeyed God. Mm. Uh, those wonderful uh, strolls through the garden. Him and Eve just holding hands, uh, looking into one another's eyes as they would uh, uh, stroll through the garden. Uh, yes, uh, they had to move on from there and create some new memories. No matter how stunning it was, uh, yes, we know it was good because that's the state in which God made it. And, and nonetheless, even though they were made good and very good, they had nonetheless to move on. It's easy for us to move on from uh, the bad, amen. Uh, yes, uh, uh, when we experience those times with no money in our pocket, when we experience those days of dark nights, uh, yes, when we experience those times of no food in the cupboard, that we will experience those notices, uh, yes, with the red on them. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy for us to move away from those experiences. Sometimes we would even deny their existence. Uh, we would try to act as if we never had a red notice in our lives. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, uh, Sometimes God wants us to move on, not only from our negative experiences, that, but God has to allow us to move on even from some of our good experiences so that we can receive something, amen, better that God has in store for us. Having gone through the fall, sometimes we have gone out some fine restaurant with exquisite food. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I mean, food that was so good that we didn't have a whole lot left over, but what we did have left, we wanted to savor it. And so we would ask uh, the waiter uh, to uh, give us a container so that we could put what was left in there. We could take it home with us and we could finish it off. Nonetheless, we would take that which we had, uh, put it into the container, put that in a bag and we would go off, place it in our car, but then something would catch our attention. Uh, perhaps it was a mall that was nearby, uh, some shop or a dress or a suit that would catch our eye. And so we would wander off into the store and we would find ourselves spending a great deal of time forgetting that we had that leftover food lying in the cup. So it was that by the time that we got back to the car and by the time that we got home, uh, the food that we had has now gone bad. My brothers and sisters, no matter how good you remember that food was, uh, it's bad now, it's spoiled. The only thing that we can do with it is let it go. We've got to move on from it, from our uh, exciting memories of it, because should we decide that we're going to forget about the fact that we left it in the car to spoil and eat it anyhow based on our good memories of it, yes, it would only make us sick and in some cases perhaps even cause us to die. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, because my brothers and sisters, it's no longer what it was when it came out of the right. kitchen and was placed on our tables in front of us and when we enjoyed it so well. Uh, we, we've got to realize that there are times in our lives when God would move us on. God moves us on in order to move us up. God moves us on in order for us to move up and fulfill our purpose in life. God was not yet done with Adam and Eve. Um, they would now have to remain in tune with God's remaining instructions for them. That's true also in your life and in my life as well. We ought not quit because life didn't go the way that it was supposed to the first time. Sometimes it might be because somebody would try to snatch our dreams out from underneath our feet. Yeah. Other times it would simply be, as it was with Adam, a self-inflicted wound. Mm. Yeah. But my brothers and sisters, nonetheless, however it occurs, we've got to understand that we've got to move on so we can move up yeah. in life. Uh, we cannot stay in our fallen, dead position in life. Adam was now spiritually dead. And if Adam would die physically, yes, he would experience eternal death because of his fall. So my brothers and sisters, God is giving us an opportunity to get out of our state of spiritual death before we experience physical death. Uh, we will not quit. If you did not pass the test, retake the test. If he did not work out or she did not stick around, there will be another he or she. If you lost your home to foreclosure or eviction, save up, uh, develop a new budget, and buy another one. When the stock market crashed at the onset of a recession in the late 1920s, people started giving up in life. 
I mean, there were some folk who were literally jumping out of windows, off buildings. Yes, because all that they had accumulated and stacked up went away with the crash. Uh, my brothers and sisters, nonetheless, after the fall of mankind, Adam and Eve went on to be fruitful and multiply even after losing the garden. They had to continue with what God would mandate out of them. Catch this. Even though man that is born of a woman is of a few days and they are full of trouble, God still has a purpose and a plan for your life. God wants to move us up out of the position and place where we are so that we can experience what God wants to do next, that we might receive the purposes of God in our lives. God still stands with outstretched arms and he is awaiting for us. Come running unto him to experience the plan of salvation in our lives. God wants to make our lives fruitful and to multiply. That's why Jesus said these words to us. He said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yes, God still wants to move us up from where we are. But my brothers and sisters, if we are to enjoy the elevator ride up, it would cause us to step into the elevator once the doors have flown open in our faces. Yes, we cannot go up without taking the initial steps to move forward into the elevator. If we would take the initial steps onto the escalator, yes, we are not moving upward. God wants us to move out, move up, that we might move in to our destiny. Yes, uh, for Adam and Eve, God would place cherubims at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way that would lead to the tree of life. Yes, uh, God did this for them. God did this in order to keep them from uh, living a life impoverished uh, because of the penalties of sin. My brothers and sisters, God has done something equally well in our lives. Yes, to enable us to receive uh, the benefit and the blessings of the place that was prepared by God that he talks about in John 14 when he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Yes, God has prepared a home for us. That's why he did what he did at Calvary's cross. That's why he would suffer, bleed, and die. That's why he would enter into Joseph's borrowed tomb. That's why, my brothers and sisters, uh, he would stay there all night Friday, all day and night Saturday, but early on Sunday morning, he would get up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands, uh, my brothers and sisters, so that we might be able to move up and move in uh, to the place where God has in store for us. God has a new residence for us. God has a new name for us. God has a new robe for us. God has, yes, a home on high. God wants us to, to move in. Yes, uh, uh, we, we would purchase a new piece of property. Uh, 
uh, it would go through escrow. Uh, and escrow uh, would close and having closed then uh, uh, the agent would hand us a set of keys so uh, that we could turn the lock, uh, open the door, Yes, uh, and we can begin the process of moving in. We can yes. move in our furniture. We can, yes, yes uh, put pictures on the wall. Yes. We can decorate uh, and hang out and throw a party. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, that's what God has in store for us. What's next in our lives uh, after we have failed? What's next in life after we have bumped our heads? What's next? in life after we have sprinkled our knees. What's next in life after we made a wrong turn? Uh, yes, what's next in life? God has prepared a purpose for us. Uh, will we walk in it? Will we receive it? Will we claim it? Will we embrace it? Yes, what God has in store for you and me. God wants us to prepare for our destiny. Yes, uh, soon and very soon. Yes, we're going to see the king. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, we ought not just simply prepare for our destiny here on earth, but we ought to also prepare most uh, and foremost uh, for our destiny uh, eternally. Yes, uh, if anybody asks you where I'm going, yes. yes, you just let them know that I'm going up yonder. Yes, uh, yes, I, I, I like to travel. I, I like to see new places and new things. I, I like to explore and, and be adventurous in life. I, 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 I like all of those things. Uh, yes, uh, I, 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 I like to... Uh, Play with my toys. Uh, yes, I, I like to experience all of those things. Yes. But my brothers and sisters, uh, yes. what God has in store yes. for us goes beyond the stuff down here. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Everything that we have and experience down here is simply temporary. Yes. God would have us to move out, move on, so move in so that we can experience his best for us. So I want to pause now to invite you right where you are. Make a decision. As you would ask yourself, what's the question? Having experienced the difficult days of life, as you would say, what's next? I'll tell you that your next can be better than your last. If you would just simply hold on to God's unchanging hand, if you would simply receive God's invitation in your life, yeah. you can experience something even greater than you have imagined or your eyes have ever seen, you can experience something even greater. And so I want you to make a choice in your life right now, right where you are, that you're going to follow Jesus, that you're going to go where he leads, where he guides. Because wherever God guides, God will provide. So this is your chance, this is your opportunity to receive what's next in your life. Lord, we thank you now. As we take this moment and opportunity to ponder and consider what's next, Lord, we pray that you would allow men and women, boys and girls, to make a decision and a choice, Lord, to walk in victory this morning. Lord, and to receive what you have in store for their lives. Lord, soften hearts. Lord, we pray that you would convict and convert as individuals will now say yes to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.